Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin. Friday, August 19th, 2016, at about 11 a.m. And I am currently settling into the brand new Ubuntu Bash shell under Windows. And I think we get to it by going in there and typing Bash. So it's interesting, already I can feel Windows becoming more Ubuntu-like just through its uh, outside the shell UI. Should I be so bold as to make a prediction that we are seeing the future here? Now there's a number of things I like to do here, like switching this to Courier New, the one true font for um, non-proportional text editing. But what I'm going to do first is make sure I have Git. Did Git get installed right along with it? Nope, but it tells you what to do. Sudo apt get install git and probably because it's the first time I booted it's gonna ask me for my password not the first time I booted but the first time I ran the bash shell uh, in a new uh, terminal session yeah there we go oh, there we go do you want to continue yes I remind you, this is on Windows. Let's see how window resizing, how graceful that is. Not bad, not bad, I can live with that. All right, it's done, so now we have Git. So I can clear, let me see if I can increase the font size. Oh, that brought up magnifier, weird. Flower Plus brought up the magnifier. I do not want that. Let's see if there's drop down menus on this. Properties. Let's see if my favorite font is actually available. Courier New, yay. And uh, 16. It sounds like that's such a large number, but this is really what's comfortable for me to read off the screen. 20 or 24, I'll go with 24 for the sake of you YouTube viewers. And uh, I'll hit OK. Ah, very nice, very nice. I hope that's my default. Defaults. Let's make it our default. I'll make you sit through that one more time. That is now my default font. So I can do PWD, presumably. Yeah, that's a good location. And now I can clone a project right into here. Uh, first, let me uh, go over to my other machine that I'm working on right now and uh, commit that change. Switching over to um, Windows Bash. Git push. And now, oh, this is the first time I'm doing it on this machine and it's a private repo, very interesting. So I'll be going through the, uh, I guess the SSH uh, process here. Um, it's unexpected. I think I will just do a git clone in the old way that requires me to type the username and password so I can avoid the SSH uh, file uh, public key uh, configuration for this video. So let's just git clone and I'll do um, https colon slash slash uh, github dot com colon mclevin slash mclevin dot github dot io and it'll probably up oh, mclevin dot github yeah how does that work it's uh yeah I'm pretty sure I have that right let me try doing it with the SSL command. Git clone git at github.com colon McLevin slash McLevin.github.io. Yes, and then it's probably going to um, reject me. Now, this is a very common thing to actually see happen. 
So let's just try switching this over to HTTPS. I think it works that way. Yeah, not found. It works a slightly different way. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, you can see it took me a bunch of uh, guesses until I remembered my uh, GitHub password, which is uh, why I definitely prefer to use uh, SSH and uh, public key uh, authentication for this. But I should now have, yep, there it is, CD mclevin.github.io. Now what I don't have yet is my uh, .vimrc locally. And um, I guess I'll uh, do that on my own time because uh, this video has covered enough. But now I can vim index.html and there you have it. It's my uh, daily journal uh, in the Windows uh, Ubuntu Bash shell. Uh, running allegedly the exact very binary from um, from the Ubuntu uh, repositories. Uh, it's a pretty amazing development. Uh, I can see already I'm going to be able to use it for my uh, daily journaling activity pretty easily. Uh, I just need to do a few final pieces here like uh, getting the SSH uh, public key over, getting GitHub to configure to use this new key unless I recycle one of my old ones. It's usually best to do a new key for every platform you're on so you can selectively disable them. Um, oh well, that, that's good. Let's try that, right? Um, keygen, SSH keygen. So um, let's see. You, don't, you usually don't have to, but you can cd into home slash dot SSH. Hope that's there. It is there. That's actually a good sign. There's a known host file because I did type yes to that one question. Uh, I think that was premature. I didn't have the public key when I did that, so we're going to get rid of that. Now, what you do is ssh, ssh hyphen keygen hyphen c for entering your uh, your password, your username in, mclevin at gmail.com, and uh, enter the file in which you take the defaults under the passphrase, passphrase again. Um, I'll probably have to do this again to get a different one now that you've seen it, but now if you do an ls, you have that id underscore rsa file. I will in fact delete this one, but uh, what you do is you just go less id, and you get that code there, and then you highlight that code, and I guess this is a Windows shell, ha how to handle copy and stuff, and this is an interesting question. Highlighting easy is a good sign. I'm actually going to uh, quit out of this and do vim foo for a second to see if that's in my copy buffer. Not with an option V, it's not. Edit, paste. Yay! Okay, so just highlighting in these uh, Windows Bash shells has that same behavior as like Sigwin and stuff, uh, of that just highlighting is your copy. You might have to look for the program's way to paste from the operating system buffer, which in this case is just like a Unix command. Oh, no, actually, a right click will do it. And uh, that is my private, uh, my public key uh, from here, so I will in fact be removing everything. It's just so that you don't think that that one is um, uh, something that, that can be used. But I'm going to do this again for myself, uh, copy and paste that over to my configuration in GitHub, and then I'll be able to do git pulls and pushes uh, without any uh, password uh, typing in challenges. And then I'll uh, get my uh, vimrc off of GitHub, put it here, probably tie it in through Dropbox so that it, the real vimrc uh, that I have deployed out there on the web stays uh, synced all the time and I just use that very lightweight reference to where to find it in the Dropbox location to keep it synced and then this is a full-fledged dev platform. I may produce a video for those other uh, you know um, steps or, or not 
when I say full-fledged dev platform, not really. It's a full-fledged daily journaling Vim platform for me. So no matter where I'm doing my development work, I actually have this other pseudo development environment just so that I'm keeping my hand uh, in uh, Vim uh, and keeping myself practiced no matter what else I'm doing uh, code development wise. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon and don't forget to subscribe.